Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Hyundai Century and since the iPad Air was released yesterday, you might be wondering yourself, should I upgrade from my iPad 3rd or 4th generation to the new iPad Air? And this is exactly what this video is about. So in this video, I'm going to give you a hardware comparison as well as some benchmark results and then just overall my opinion whether this is a solid upgrade or whether you should wait for the next generation of the iPad Air. So starting off with the hardware and the design, of course, there's a huge difference that's immediately apparent once you actually pick up the iPad Air. Now, not only did it almost lose 200 grams down from 650 to now 450 grams, but also it cut down almost 2 millimeters in terms of thickness. So before the third and fourth generation were 9.4 millimeters, and now we find an iPad that's only 7.5 millimeters thin. So definitely a huge difference that you notice straight away. Another important physical difference is actually how wide the iPad is. Apple managed to slim down the bezels by almost 50%. So while the second, third and fourth generation of the iPads are 18.5 centimeters wide, we now have an iPad Air that's only 17 centimeters wide. But now what does this smaller bezel mean in everyday life? Well, definitely that the typing experience, at least in portrait, is a lot better than it used to be because now it's easy to stretch across the screen with your both thumbs and so the typing experience is definitely improved and a big plus for this new small bezel size. In terms of appearance another big difference is definitely the new color. So while we have just a plain silver metal here on the second, third and fourth generation iPads we actually now have what Apple calls space gray and while I really like the color in the first place when I saw it in my hand now honestly especially in the evenings when the light isn't so good I actually hate the color and, some and someone actually made an interesting comment below my iPad Air unboxing saying that to him this space gray color looks like fake metal. So if a company tries to sell you something that's plastic but they want you to believe that it's metal then that's kind of how it looks and I have to agree this darker color looks certainly kind of weird and I'm not the biggest fan of it but then again of course you can also just go ahead and get the white iPad which still has this silver back. If you take a look at the buttons, the volume control used to be just one button. Now we actually have two separate ones for whatever that's worth. Also, all the buttons are now made out of metal, which definitely feels nice and also just blends in very nice with the color of the iPad itself. And then we also now get a second microphone. So to have actually improved performance when, for example, taking Skype calls or also using the new Hangouts app or just whenever you want to do like a video chat, then dual microphone should definitely be a big improvement. On the bottom of the iPad, we'll see that we now have the lightning port. If you already have an iPad 4, then that's not a change and you can just continue to use your cables. If you have an older iPad like the third or second generation, then you still have the 13 pin dock connector. So that's definitely a change that you should be aware of. But in general, the lightning connector is a pretty good connector, at least in my experience. It's nice that you can just reverse it. And so there's not really an issue at all. Also on the bottom of the iPad, we find another big change is that we now have stereo speakers where we only had a mono speaker before. Also, the speaker is really placed on the bottom of the device, so it's kind of going towards your hands, while the speaker on the previous generation's iPad were kind of firing to the back completely. So it's a noticeable improvement with quite a bit better audio performance. And if you'd want to see a dedicated video just covering the speaker quality, then just head on over to my friend's channel, Mac Talks Tech. He has a dedicated comparison up on his channel. So now let's actually take a look at the inside and the hardware that's built into these iPads in terms of processor and GPU. So starting off, we have my iPad third generation on the right side. And at least in terms of pure numbers, when it comes to clock speed, there isn't really a big difference. So the iPad 3 has a dual core processor that's clocked at one gigahertz. It's called the A5X by Apple, which was improved processor that's based on the A5. Also, we have one gigabyte of memory, so one gigabyte of RAM. And then if we just take a look at the Air that was released two years later, we still only have one gig of RAM and also a dual core processor. But that's now a 1.39 gigahertz clock processor. That's the A7 that we know from the iPhone 5S. So just looking at the raw numbers right there, it doesn't really seem to have a big difference. But now if we actually run Geekbench, then we just see that there really is a big difference. So starting off, we see that the iPad 3 scored 263 points in the single core score and 497 points in the multi-core score. So that definitely already doesn't really sound very high, but now if we take a look at the iPad Air, we see that it scored 1,481 points 
on the single core and then 2697 on the multi-core. So there's a huge difference and at least in terms of benchmarks it seems like the iPad Air is five times faster than for example the iPad 3rd generation. Now of course we have to keep in mind that the difference won't be just as big if we compare the iPad 4 but I just have the iPad 3 right here in my hand so this is the difference that you'll see there which is pretty massive. So with the Geekbench benchmark we checked the processor and how capable they are and there was a big difference. Now let's take a look at the GPU, so how well the graphics performs. And for this I ran the iStorm Unlimited test. Here on the iPad 3rd generation it scores 4092 points. Now taking a look at the iStorm Unlimited test on the iPad Air, we actually get a score of 14908 points, so it's a huge difference. If we take a look at the frame rates then we see that the graphics test 1 ran at 24 frames per second on the iPad 3, but it ran at 102 frames per second on the iPad Air, so it's a lot more capable in terms of gaming. Also, the graphics test 2 is 17 frames on the iPad 3, and we actually get 68 frames on the iPad Air. So again, a huge difference in terms here of the graphics power. So if you really want a tablet that you can game with, then the iPad 3 isn't really the best choice anymore and the iPad Air just delivers a lot more performance. So these are the benchmarks results and I have to say also in just everyday performance there's a huge difference in terms of performance especially between the iPad 3 and also the iPad Air. The iPad 4 will be slightly faster than the iPad 3 that I have right here but still I think it's definitely worth the upgrade. The biggest upgrade is just the weight and how this iPad feeds in your hand. And so I really recommend you to go into the store, check it out for yourself because it's really tough to get it across in a video. But I still hope that this was helpful for you and that maybe was able to make up your mind whether the iPad 3 is still a good tablet for you or whether you should go out and upgrade to the iPad Air. If you want to upgrade then it's definitely always a good idea to just sell your old iPad because they hold the value very well so you might not even have to spend too much money on a new iPad Air. And so this also wraps up my video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Do you think an iPad 3 is still perfectly fine because it also has the Retina display? Or do you think the iPad Air is a worthy upgrade? I'm really eager to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more iPad Air coverage and also other tech videos. And like the video if you enjoyed it. See you next time.